And a pleasant good evening to everyone out there on Irish Breakdown land. I'm Vince D'Addario. I am the football analyst here at irishbreakdown.com. And with me, as always, is this guy over here. He is Brian Driscoll. He's the publisher at irishbreakdown.com. Thanks for bearing with us. We appreciate it. Uh, we sounded like you know weird robot people there for a minute, yeah. so we had to get that fixed. So thanks for hanging in there, everybody. Uh, this is our Upon Further Review uh, podcast, which uh, is is always interesting. This is this right here. This show right here is why you come to Irish Breakdown because we are we broke down the film like some coach. of you may not feel good about coming to Irish Breakdown <laughs> well, after the podcast well, tonight. I'm just giving you a warning right now. Look, I don't think anybody can say that they were overly happy after watching uh, the Purdue game, but uh, depends on what part of the ball we're talking about. Fair enough. Fair enough. So let's jump right in, Brian. You and I kind of talked a little bit before we mm-hmm. came on the air. Big picture, you know, we had it. We, we had a show yesterday. We obviously watched the game yesterday. You were positive about the offensive line with kind of where they were headed from an aggression standpoint, not right. a fundamental standpoint, from an aggression standpoint, something to build on. You can't have one without the other, really. How are you feeling after watching the film? Let's just go. Let's just dive right into it. Yeah, so let, we're going to start with the offense because last night we talked about the defense first. So we're going to go offense tonight first, and and I'll be honest with you, Vince, I am not feeling as good about the the, the direction of the offense after coming out of that game. And here, here's a couple reasons for it. Number okay. one, I, I don't feel like they adjusted in a lot of ways that I think are sustainable. And, and here's some things that 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 uh, concern me. Number one, offensively, this group just can't get on the same page. And it's like at one point in time, it's the pass game's going well, then it's not, then the run game starts to go, but the pass game isn't good. Um, the offensive line, you know, takes some strides in regards to aggressiveness, but their execution was still bad. Uh, the the more you watch the game, you're like, yeah, Purdue's got like one really good player in their front seven, and that's it. And that's George Karloftis, who was a lot more disruptive than his numbers would otherwise indicate. When I when I look at it, I see holes being exposed on this offense. And they're all correctable. The problem, Vince, is I don't know if they will be corrected. Well, and we that's have, really we, where it comes comes down to. Yeah, we, we've seen nothing in the three games to show us that they're trying to correct. We're, we're seeing we're seeing Tommy Reese as a play caller adjust to protect it, but it's not being corrected. Now the toughness was corrected. That's important because there's yeah, a lot absolutely. of teams on the schedule that Notre Dame can beat if they just play hard. I mean that's just a fact especially with the way the defense played yesterday, if they can then build on that. But but here's some concerns I have, Vince. The, there's a blueprint that has now been written on this Notre Dame offense, and it's why it has progressively gotten worse in each of the three games. Looked great against Florida State. That looking great against Florida State's not looking so great now. You know, Florida <laughs> State's pretty awful. Uh, you know, but but teams have gotten now more film on what this is going to look like. They got progressively worse against against Toledo, and then it was even worse against Purdue. And none of these teams are very good on defense, if we're being honest. I mean, Purdue did what they did to Notre Dame on Saturday without their best cornerback. You know that that's that's concerning. And and here's some things that you're seeing written that that concern me when I watch this game. Number one, pass protection is a huge issue, and it's three areas that concern me the most events. Number one is they just have trouble technique wise on the edge and it's both guys. They either give up too much ground and get, I mean, there was plays Vince where both tackles, it was a, it was a sack early in the it second early half. On. Yeah. Where both tackles got just driven into the quarterback, like not, not like bullied into the quarterback mm-hmm. and Jack Cone gets backs. sacked. Their yes. back sandwiched Jack Cohn. He he gets he had, sacked. I mean, just, yeah, he gets sacked before guys. I've never seen before that. Avery Davis finishes hitch route, which right. is a six yard route. I've never seen a, that before. Have you ever hitch. seen no. both tackles just not snapped, from a good right? team? Like, I've seen it from well, like Alabama's playing Mercer, or you know, but I've that, never man. seen it from a good team like this. Then there's other plays where they're just constantly oversetting. And then, the, the, so the oversetting was a big part of the problem, Vince, because when they overset and their their pass drop on the tackle, they've got that weird hop thing, and they're really short and narrow with their base. And then they 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 overset, and then what Purdue is doing is they're just kind of driving into that inside shoulder. And one of two things is happening: one is they just get that power arm up in there and they drive him back, or B, what they were doing to Tosh Baker's, they were just hard rushing him inside and, and beating him. And, and look, they're battling. 
but they're just working from a disadvantage. Yeah. There's another issue that I see. We've talked about this in 2018 and we talked about it in 2019. And these were issues in both of those seasons. And that is they were relatively simple line games that teams could do to put pressure on Notre Dame's quarterback with, with their protections. There are flaws in their protection scheme that have yet to be adjusted and teams are just taking advantage of it. I have never in my, in my life seen a team like Notre Dame give up the same corner fire pressure gonna, where a guy comes through that. and hits the quarterback in two games it's identical like it, it was a huge turnover in last week's game and then you don't adjust it like there was no recognition from the quarterback to the left tackle to the left guard there was no recognition that this is going to happen teams are bringing basically short you know uh drew breeze in the i was listening to just kind of i wanted to hear how he did last night yeah. i was listening while he called it the nub side if you ever hear drew breeze he's talking about the short there's no tight end side it's a short side but it's a lot of times it's coming from the boundary where it's the short side of the field. Notre Dame doesn't have a tight end over there and they're just bringing corner fires and there's nobody to pick it up. Tosh Baker stepping inside for some reason. And they like on the first, on that particular play, they had, um, you know, there's no back over there. I would simply was over there and he went directly right, because his protection wasn't, it wasn't right. There. He went correctly, directly to the right. So I see that. And then I see the first play of the game where they brought up basically a five man pressure. So he had four defensive linemen, two inside linebackers. They just ran a double inside dog, dropped their tight end. It was just a zone fire, and they brought five guys. Notre Dame had six blockers. They had the five offensive linemen, and they lined up Avery Dave, or uh, excuse me, Kyron Williams on the edge to help double team George Karloftis. And nobody blocked. So they, the first linebacker crashed. They picked that up, and then the second linebacker comes right off his tail, and there's nobody to pick it up. And there was nothing schematically built into the pass game to where if you, because here's the thing you could say, okay, well, based on that protection, the direction in which they were sliding, there is nobody to account for that. Okay, Jack Cohn's got to account for that. But there's nothing in the scheme that gives him an out. Right. There's, because there's they're running no hot, deeper routes. No hot read. There's nothing. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, you, you some people use hots. Um, some people just build in, you know, blitz beaters. I personally am a, is a, am a fan of the built-in blitz beaters because then there's less decision-making by the receivers. Mm -hmm. It's just, hey, you're running a, you know, a, a, an under route or whatever the case may be. There's nothing like that. There's nobody looking for the ball when Jack Cohn got hit because they weren't into the route yet. That's not a criticism of the wide receivers. And uh, you saw this multiple times. I mean, they're just – I mean, there was literally – it felt like Purdue could just dial up a pressure and get it whenever they needed it. And that's really problematic because Purdue's not a great pass rushing team outside of George Karloftis. They're George Karloftis. They're just not. Toledo's not a great pass rushing team. Florida State has not been a great pass rushing team other than when they played Notre Dame. When you see the same things happening week after week after week and there's no technical adjustment being made, that makes me concerned about whether it gets fixed. Now, we've compared this to 2018 a lot. Well, in 2018 against Vanderbilt, the offensive line at least played better in the third game. The quarterback didn't, and the pass game struggled, but the offensive line played better. They ran for over 200 yards against Vanderbilt in 2018, if you remember. We saw no adjustments in this game, Vince, at all, from an offensive line coaching preparation standpoint. What we saw was Tommy Reese basically have to go with a lot of seven- and eight-man protections. And lo and behold, when you're dropping eight, or you're you're block you know keeping in seven or eight to block five and six, they outnumber you now in the pass game. Sure, because you're only sending two out in a route, maybe three with the back. Yeah, maybe. And and you know so you're putting Joe Alt in the game as a tight end, and it's a nice little wrinkle. Yeah, you're not like gonna be able actually. to do that week after week after week, and you're very limited. You become very okay. Well, when he's in the game, you're not running Joe out Alt on a route, so you've now got six blockers, and now you've only got at most four guys in pass protection. Well, mad. then they were doing that 12 13 personnel. George Takis isn't getting the ball. He hasn't had the ball thrown to him all year. So now that's three guys that might be potential route, you know, as in routes. And we're kind of back to the same story we were in last year. And the difference is last year they did it because they wanted to. And so they were good at it. <laughs> you know, they could go 12 and 13 personnel. You knew they're going to do it and they could still sure. just bully ball you. They're not doing that today, Vince. And then we've also seen a, a, the, the, the book kind of be written on the Notre Dame wide receivers. Toledo did it and Purdue did it even more, which is just be physical with them because they don't know how to get off, get off press. There's only one guy that knows how to get off press that I've seen so far. And, and uh, there's only one guy that I know that I've seen that knows how to defeat a down. Cause there's two types of ways that you 
affect the receiver's route. Number one is being aggressive in press coverage. Number two is to reroute down the line, down, down the field. A reroute is essentially, you know, if I'm a receiver, I'm trying to, you know, run a seam route two yards outside the hash. Your job is to not let me get a free run up two yards outside the hash. I've seen one receiver that knows how to beat that, and that's Joe Wilkins, who who actually ran a really good press release yesterday that 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 Jack Cohn should have thrown him the ball, to be honest with you. It, but Jack was locked in on you know Kevin Austin a lot yesterday. And they're just beating him up, saying you're because here's the the combination of you can't protect your quarterback with your receivers are gonna take forever to get into routes is a really bad combination. And it's and then the third part of that is all your routes are deep. Basic or most of your routes are deep or outbreaking routes. That's a really bad combination. Right. They're going to have to adjust that. Yes. And you're struggling in that regards. And you haven't played good defenses yet. I mean, you just have. They're they're going to get tested this week. I mean, this this will be the best defense that they play for a while. Well, I mean, Cincinnati's good too. Don't get me wrong. But two weeks in a row, they're going to get tested. And essentially, like the run game success they had yesterday required bodies. And you you just can't be that way. When your best personnel requires you to have more speed on the field, but you can't run the ball out of that. And so, in order to run the ball, you've got to put more bodies on the field. You can't get you can't be effective in, in run and pass in your in your with your best guys on the field. Right, that's a big problem for me. So as I watch this game, Vince, I got more and more concerned about direction of this football team. And if it wasn't for three big plays yesterday, this offense did almost nothing. Mm-hmm. I mean, they made three big plays. Yeah, I, I think this offense is going to be predicated on the big play. I mean, I, if they're going to be successful, they're going to have to hit big plays. I mean, and that's. You like to be able to hit big plays as part of your offense, but unfortunately, I think that's going to be their offense. I mean, partly, right? I mean, that's that's the sad part. And yeah. the wide receivers can't play the way they did again, the way they played this past. Right. I mean, because if the offensive line is going to be who they are, and you're going to scheme around, and you're going to do all these things. Often, the, the the receivers have to be better. They they have to be better across the board. And they were. But that just, gets back to my problem, though, Vince. The things that they struggled with yesterday are things that have been an issue for this receiving core for four or five years. And that is they don't know how to play. They're just, re- they've relied on their talent for years since 2017. It's just, re- they just rely on their talent. Now, when you have Miles Boykin and Chase Claypool, there's things you can get away with. When you have Javon McKinley and Ben Skaronic, who aren't that 6'4, 4'4, 2 guy, Vince, you can't get away with that. And Kevin Austin, to me, can be that kind of guy. But I mean, there were times Vince where they were literally just playing him inside and he just was running straight up the field. Yeah. And lo and behold, guess what? He gets run out of bounds. You know, same thing happened to Braden Lindsay. I, I mean, it, it was, it was football one Oh one and we weren't even seeing it Vince. I agree. And it was snap after snap after snap, no adjustment. I thought after watching Toledo last week, there'd be some adjustments. You just watch Toledo jam your receivers and, and throw off the timing of your pass game. And we saw no adjustment. So there's some things that are going to have to get fixed in a hurry, and I just don't know if they're things that are important to them. That that that's I see this as an offense that is very much focused on scheme and not nearly focused enough on how to play. That's my problem. And as we've seen the defense improve, it's because they focused on cleaning up the technique, right? And then the technique allows the allows the scheme to thrive. I haven't seen that on offense at receiver and at, and at quarterback. Or I mean, excuse me, on the offensive line, and um, that's problematic. Now, can it get fixed in the next game? Hope so. Uh, but this is just what I've seen is I've seen no technical changes in the first two games. Credit where credit is due, they clearly stuck a foot in some behinds this week and they played harder. They did. They did. They did. I agree with that, but. The there were a couple things were a yeah, problem. Th- there were a couple uh, runs where they did move the line. I mean, and, but it wasn't. It's because Notre Dame's guys were just better than 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 Purdue's guys as far as from a from a strength standpoint, from a size standpoint, all that they were able to move the line of scrimmage. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I, I do believe that Williams is getting better at waiting and finding a hole and then going right because before it was always trying to hit that home run just boom Mm -hmm. go boom go boom go and he would miss holes so he's doing a lot better at staying patient and staying behind the line when he has that opportunity 
which is few and far between, don't get me wrong. But there were a few times where they did get some push and they reestablished the yep. line of scrimmage down the way. They did. Uh, the problem, the bigger problem I have, if you want to talk schemes, since we're kind of going down that road, Brian, I did not like there, – there was one where they peeled um, Kane Madden out and he was lead blocking on the outside. What are you doing? Like right. that – he he didn't hit anybody number one and but I could have told you that was going to happen because he didn't hit anybody when he was at Marshall and mm-hmm. they would do that like that kind of scheme doesn't work for me right not now, with him when, when they did it with Carell he sealed this out he sealed it and he he actually found a guy in space and he blocked him okay you can't go right with that you have to go left. had a nice play on that too right um, if you're going to be pulling to the right you have to pull with your backside guys i mean they, yeah. they just it's just you, you look, kane madden was a was um the right side of the line was worse on film than i thought and you you said what i said to you before the show just so people yeah um a uh, little peek behind the curtain yeah <laughs> it, it is i was like vince i have to watch film kane madden was worse than i thought he was uh, he 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 moved his feet more which was good but he really struggles to do anything except block the guy right in front of him. Well, and he gets uh, off base when, like, okay, you're right. He is moving his feet more, but like he doesn't get sent. Like what I mean is centered yeah. up on anybody, right? And he ends where, up where he was good. Vince was when he was down blocking in the a gap. He yeah. had some really nice down a block gaps. But when he has to reach out, or when he has to, when you know, when he has to, you know, any kind of zone block where he has to kind of get because so a zone is essentially we've kind of explained this so if Vince and I are working together on a zone and we're going this way and there's a guy you know like right here in between us right this line is a, is a I player like I like okay this. we're gonna go this way so we're both going other way other way I'm going other way here. oh yeah, we're, we're going together. this way we're not double teaming gotcha. so we're, we are we're gonna do a zone combo so I gotta step two Vince he's gonna step with his inside arm so his left arm mm-hmm. right and so, then yeah. he's going to hit that guy, and he's got to let me work over, and then I and then I'm over, going. and then once I overtake, he then goes to the next level. Right. We're not seeing them get to the next level on any kind of zone blocks right now. They, it, with the exception of that one where they just like ran right up the gut and they just kind of bullied. And that's well when they ball. were decent when they were able to right. do that. Right. But you can't do that against you Wisconsin. That. No. You can't do that against Cincinnati. No. And, and so. You're seeing them not, get a decent push up front, but they're doing the expense of they they can't block a linebacker. I mean, there were so so many times where if, if you see a competent offensive line, they got that good first push, and then a, a linebacker comes through, and then they come off and they hit that linebacker, and then the running back makes a, a cut. And when they were making that cut, they were getting tackled by that linebacker, and, and they just they that that was concerning to me. His lack of foot speed is concerning to me. It was my yeah. big fear coming in. It's been problematic. He can't finish blocks because once guys get on the outside of him, once he turns his hips, he's done. He's done. And he get I mean, he gets tossed around. Once he turns like this, he, loses his he balance. turns like this, he loses yeah. his balance. He doesn't have a good base. Yeah. And he just gets tossed. And he he's he goes from this really strong bull in a china shop kind of guy to just being tossed to the side. Right. That's that's concerning. And I and I told you when when we were texting. I told you that I have never wanted to be wrong more in my yeah. life than with Kane Madden. And I'm even, I guess we're even more right than we anticipated, yeah. which is, it's super concerning, super concerning. Cause you cannot have that kind of a liability in the game. You just can't. I did see some good things from Zeke Crow in this game. He had mm-hmm. too many plays where he was driven back. Uh, he just, cause he'll just stop his feet and then take the hit. When he kept his feet moving, Zeke had some really nice block on side. That is a positive. I thought when Tosh Baker's technique is right, again, he is really impressive. He probably had five of the seven or eight best blocks on the day. When, you know, when, when, when his technique is right, uh, Tosh was really good. So there were some positive. Jarrett Patterson, I think, continues to progress. But the problem with Jarrett Patterson is he's not getting any help. Yeah, especially from the right yeah. side. He's got nothing uh, on either side. Yeah, because like he's leaving at the time where when he's leaving on double teams, that's the point where that other guy's supposed to be taken over, but then they stop their feet and they don't overtake. Right. And so, uh, but I thought Zeke got better. I thought Zeke Zeke was Zeke had some really good blocks on Saturday. He had some really good like physical moving guys yeah. off the ball blocks. The problem that Zeke has, Vince, and I don't know if you if you agree with this, if you saw this, but when Zeke stops moving his feet, he gets destroyed. 
When Zeke moves his feet, he's really good. Right. That's what we saw on Saturday. Yeah. I had somebody tell me this summer that the problem that they're this fall in fall camp, the problem that they've been having with Zeke Carell is on some snaps, he's really good. And on some snaps, he's really bad. And yesterday was a perfect example of that. The first two games, yeah. he just pretty much was really bad. But what we saw from Zeke yesterday, Vince, is when he came off and he kept his base slow and he drove off and he drove his feet through contact, he had some really good blocks. I mean, like, okay, that's the Zeke Carell that we've been waiting for. Right. But then that's not even half the place. And the other half the place, he just stops his feet. That's a coaching thing. Yeah. Because you're seeing it across the board. You're seeing guys at all five spots hitting and stopping way too much. And and that is um that is a pro- problematic for me. Uh I just, you know, Xander Kristoff got in there, he got beat on one play. I thought he blocked well, and then we just didn't see him again after like one or yeah, two years. I, I kept looking for him because, you know, again, watching it live in the stadium, it was hard for me to tell when he was in, when he was out. I did notice in the one early uh series that he was in. But yeah, I never saw him after that, really. Yeah. And and that was disturbing because whoever's up in the eye in the sky looking down at the D offensive line who thought that, no, you know what? The guards are doing great. Let's keep it the way it is. Uh, I'm, you know, Unless it was just one of those things where they just played them to appease, appease people, people and then go yeah. back to what they were doing. Come on. I, I don't, I, I I don't want to say – I mean, don't, don't I react to that in a way because I, I'm not I, don't, reacting know, to I don't know the reason just, for it. Yeah, I'm just uh, saying. We it. still have yet to see Rocco Spindler. And, and you know, look, if you're if you're not going to teach guys how to play, at least put your most talented guys out there at this point. Sure. I mean, that's the way I look at it. So that that was Vince. That was problematic, and the tight end blocking remains really media. Like it's a lot of low hand average. stuff. Like they it's, get it's, out le- it's lunging. Feeding. Yes, yeah. I didn't and expect I, that from a guy that coached in the National Football League. And I they was re- they've regressed in year two of of John McNulty's of year so far. I stood right next to uh, George Takis and and Michael Mayer during practice, and they were working on the sled right. Mm-hmm. And the two of those guys were up front. They were working. It was the two man sled, and they were working on it together. Man, they had great base. Mm-hmm. They were inside, and they were just moving that thing. Right. And I mean, strength—you could just see it. Like big dudes moving things. I haven't seen that yet, and I know it's getting coached because I heard Coach McNulty it's tell at him least that. getting coached in drills. Fair enough. What we don't know is—is is it translating is it to getting corrected, and is it team yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you fair know. enough. Because you but, know, Vince, you you know whether you're in high school or college or NFL, you know those guys that when they're in an individual drill and there's no thinking, it's just step and go. Their technique is sound, but then, then there's a defense. There's maybe a guy might slant. He might do this. He might do that. It's a little bit of a different deal. I, so I remember thinking to myself, these dudes are going to be able to block really, really well. You know, all of that because then the next guy is behind them. They're not. They're not quite as big. They're not quite as strong. It was clear right. that those guys were one too. The problem for me is that in the game, it's all arms. Like they're leaning and they're, it, it's just, it's not good. It's really, yeah. really not good. Their base is terrible. Absolutely terrible. Again, we saw a step in the right direction from a toughness standpoint. I don't want to forget that, but they're going to happen. And, and look, there's a, a, a conversation raging in the, you know, as soon as like we say something negative, like all the people that like to be negative just like jump on it, you know, and, and, I, and I get it. I'm frustrated. But uh, these things are can be corrected quickly. I just don't think they will. Yeah, like like the, the press release part, stuff man. that can be corrected by Wisconsin with a good receivers coach. But you got to actually think that. It, here's the thing: if you don't think it's a problem, then it doesn't matter. If you're just oh come on, Kevin, you got to be better than that. You know, bench right. him. Okay, fine. Okay, but are you teaching him how to play? I don't think you are. Because again, Chase had this problem. Boykin had this problem. You know, uh, Javon had this problem at times last year. Skoranek, he didn't uh, get off the press. Yeah, but he at least had technique. He just had slow well, because feet. he had but, it from another coaching right, staff, right? But he he got jammed up a bunch too. Where Ben yeah. was better, Ben was better at beating the reroutes down the field. That's where Ben was. Better. I agree with he, that. He wasn't very good at the line of scrimmage, though. Yeah, but you know that's a uh, so so. Those are problematic things. Now, the positive that I took out of yesterday was if they can figure this out. This offense is going to explode because they really do have a lot of speed. I mean, Braden Lindsey just ran right by that guy multiple times. I mean, he, he, Jack Cohn yesterday was more locked in on that. That like you could see it even in the, a little bit in the second half, he was just kind of locking in on Kevin Austin as the one on one. 
And there were times I thought the field read probably would have been the better read. There was a lot of one-on-one you know? opportunities over there. Because what they're doing is they're just they, – the, 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 Purdue saw what is happening against Florida State and Toledo, and they said they're just going to throw those outside fades. We know how we can bait them into those outside fades. So what do you do? Just stay inside, let that guy go, and bam, mm -hmm. right him out of bounds. Because they're not – they don't use their hands. So it, it's uh, – it's, it's definitely – problematic well and i and i've been i've been very happy with the the play of the running backs i, I think yeah, that they've gotten really good so better i thought they've gotten progressively yeah. better and they were already in a good place yeah but i think they've gotten better as the as the three games have gone they are on coached so well. that's a positive they're not right? just and here things about they're not just talented events they're clearly coached well yeah i like, agree with that that's that's a difference they're clearly yes. coached well right so after watching the film, I, I, I'm a little more discouraged because I saw no adjustments technically to what was going on in the first two games. We saw a, a an attitude adjustment up front, which was good. And we saw some physicality, which is good. So I feel at least better about that. But now it's like, so my hope is, okay, so let's put a positive spin on this. And I am going to call this spin because that's what it is. Uh, meaning like, cause I'm taking sort of a devil's advocate, positive spin on this is that look, Jeff Quinn's focus last week had to be on getting lighting a fire under. Okay. Okay, cool. You did that now build on that, but now it's kind of say, okay, now we got to get our footwork down fellas. Cause our, our technique is our footwork is a hot mess, right? We're not working our feet through contact. We're not our, you know, we're not getting, oh yeah, you got to really hustle out there to, to overtake that combo block so we can get, cause here's the thing. If they can just do one simple thing, which is just improve on their combo blocks in the zone to get to the second level, these running backs are going to go off. I they agree. are going to go off. And this is basic zone one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not talking about driving guys off the blind five yards. I'm not just talking about away. looking just like away. you know Quentin Nelson. I'm just about get a body <laughs> on a body. Right. If they can get a body on a body, Chris Tyree and Kyron Williams are going to go off. Go off, and they still, but they still haven't figured out how to protect the edge. The only way that they could protect the edge yesterday in their run game was when they put three tight ends on the field. You can't do that all year. And the when other way was they would let the guy go up the field. Like that's their run blocking on some of this stuff. Is yeah. they let the defensive end go up the field and then they right. cut underneath it. Like which there was is, a play yesterday, Vince, where they had they had two tight ends in the game. One guy to the left went just upfield and blocked. The guy on the right came backside, didn't block the edge. He was going around leading. And both edge guys came free in a run game, and there was no there was no pull. There was no, it was just like what the heck is going on? You no, know, and they're and they're still uh, not blocking the backside end, which yeah. it, it caught him in the you know bit him in the butt at one point because they got a tackle yeah. for loss. Yeah, I mean, come on, guys, that's on film. People know that's what you're doing when they right. feel like they're not getting blocked. They're crashing hard, and right. the defensive ends are only going to get better. You know, moving forward, like it, just little things like that bother me, um, but. I want to – we got a couple super chats, Vince, that I want to get to because they, they're going to lead us to conversations that we need to have about this. Number one is – Corey D says, thank you for the super chat, Corey. He says, yeah, I wonder if opposing coaches who played Notre Dame say to each other, Notre Dame is a talented team with great potential but are so poorly coached. Uh, I will be honest with you. That's something that I have been told for several, for the last two, three years from coaches that I know in the business. I've been told that about Notre Dame on special teams, and I've been told that about Notre Dame on offense. Uh, everyone that I know on defense says that's one of the best coach teams that, that we faced. They said it. That's what they said about Clark Lee. I haven't talked to anybody about what they're saying. Right. It's Freeman. still early for that. Yeah. Right. But I, but people that I know are very high on Marcus Freeman. We, I just haven't had conversations with them about what they've seen so far. So to, to your point, I, I do think that, and I think the way that Purdue and Toledo defended Notre Dame tells me they don't think you know how to stop them technically. The fact that they're they're doing the things they if if you actually were respected Notre Dame's the talent of their receivers and thought they were well coached players because the talent is there. I mean, when when they get a clean release, they crush DBs. I'm not talking beat them by a step. That's I'm talking they are beating guys by four or five yards. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, they are killing guys. But so teams are like, well, we can't run with them. Right. So what are we going to do? We're just going to try to beat them up because they have no technique. And when they miss, it's a big play. But yeah. when they, but they're just not. I mean, Kevin Austin, that was one of the worst receiver performances I've ever seen on Saturday. Really, and bad. it was it was so in his head that that physicality that they were doing was so in his head. He didn't know what to do. 
I mean, he's dropping. He dropped, you know, just that slant route that he dropped yeah. early. That went right to his hands. Could have been a touchdown potentially. Yeah. I mean, I mean he, he drops two deep balls that that he made that catch last week. Like one of them, I thought he caught. Like yeah. I was celebrating, and he ended up dropping yeah. it, it, it. But it, it was clearly in his head. Yeah. And they can get mad at Kevin all they want, but the reality is, is you didn't you didn't give him the tools he needs to to be better there, in my opinion. Now, he's got to lock in more and be mentally tougher and all that, but this is still a kid that hasn't played a whole lot of football in college. Right. Yeah, really not. So that was that was frustrating, but that they're they're playing Notre Dame like a team like we know we can't match up for them athlete for athlete. We know they have good schemes. We can't let them utilize those things. Mm-hmm. We have to beat them up. We have to throw off the timing of what they're doing and we're going to attack that line. There's no respect for the Notre Dame offensive line going on right now. The way the teams are schematically attacking Notre Dame, Vince, is, tells me there's no respect for that line because they're not doing what they did last year, which is loading up eight, nine guys in the box. That's why they can't, they're not not running the ball because teams are loading the box up. They're not not running the ball because they're getting their butt whooped by five guys, four or five guys consistently. That's problematic. So to his point, I do I do think opposing coaches feel that way from a technical standpoint, yeah. in my opinion. My, I, my, my biggest issue, I think, overall, like big picture, is the fact that Tommy Reese is scheming around the offensive line. He sees opposed, it. it well, he of course he sees, sees it. it, and I know he sees it. The problem is, and I don't know how much power he has on the offensive side of things, right, when it comes to the other coaches – that he has to scheme around it as opposed to getting it fixed, right? And they're not worrying about getting it fixed. They're worried about doing other things to mask the problem. Right, which and is that's, that's just, his job ultimately as an offensive coordinator. You're right. Coordinator. It, but again, he can clearly see that it's an issue, mm-hmm. right? And it's But it's still not getting corrected. On the, on the TV copy, they mentioned a few different times about how Brian Kelly's been in with the line and blah, 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 blah. To me, and look, that I would, would explain first... maybe why they played harder this week. That's you took the words right I'm out sorry. of my mouth. See, that's why I got to <laughs> cut you off because I take those great thoughts. Away from you. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> no, no, no. But that's what I was going to say is that I think that, and again, I will throw Brian Kelly under the bus for a lot of things. <laughs> but I think him getting in their ASS about stuff is mm-hmm. what got them fired up, right? But it's not his job to go in there and teach them all the technical stuff. That's what the right. offensive line is. It's coach. his job. It's his it's job his to hire job. Can do it, and he didn't. But, do that. but that tells me Brian Kelly sees it's a problem too. Brian Kelly sees yeah, but that does Brian Kelly going. think the problem is that they weren't playing hard, or does he also see the technical problems? Good. That's the difference. I, I, I don't know. And yeah, that's what we're going to find out over the next two, three weeks. Yes, absolutely. But right. I think it's because of him getting in there is yeah. why they played harder. Yeah. So we'll see. I we'll hope see. anyway. I mean, you know, because, you know, yeah. But this is where, you know, you've got a 28, 29-year-old offensive coordinator that's right. never coached anything other than quarterbacks. Right. He's not going to jump. Like, this is one thing that Chip Long, Mike Dembrock could do because Mike Dembrock's coached tight ends and no tackles in his career. You know, Chip Long has coached tight ends, which means he knows how to coach run blocking. He knows how to coach sure. those kind of things. That his Chip, this isn't saying they're better or worse coaches. This is just about, look, I, and I've said this about myself. I couldn't have gone in there and coached the offensive line. I can I can get on the board and tell them, hey, here's what we need to do, and here's the scheme, scheme and how to stop yes. it and all that kind of stuff. But I couldn't have gone in there and say, okay, here's how we're gonna here's how to teach a combo block. Mm-hmm. I know what to do and I know what it should look like, but I couldn't teach them and and you know drill and it the way they didn't step and right. drills. when, I, yeah, when right. I was that age. I just right. I couldn't have done it. Right. Me neither. And, and so there's only so much Tommy Reese can do. And the fact that he's having to do what he's doing schematically to protect the line is a major problem at the university. Agreed. Agreed. And, and, and the, the, but see, here's, here's what makes it worse. The fact that the receivers aren't really well coached and there's where his, where he needs to adapt is there needs to be more like when they do do like when they do crossing routes, a lot of times it's from a bunch formation and teams kind of see it and they jump yeah. it. Because it's just happening so quick, they just pass it off. They need to spread the field more, in my opinion. They need to spread the field more and say, hey, look, there's some things we got to do quick game-wise, perimeter screen-wise. We've got to get teams chasing out that way. Because right now, they're just playing this way. And they're playing physical. They're trying to funnel the ball deep outside. And they're basically saying, if we beat up your receivers on all these vertical routes you're running, you're not going to have time to get them to football. And that's happening a lot. Because it messes up your timing, and right. they know that the that the quarterback's not going to have that kind of I mean, time. You go back and watch, even on the TV copy, you can see this. 
And this is what we saw when we watched it live. Jack Cohn's getting hit or forced out of the pocket before guys are even getting into and out of their breaks. I mean, it's not like people say, hey, go get rid of the ball. Well, well, to who? Yeah, You can't right. just throw it away. You're in the pocket. It's a penalty. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it, it, it's a it's a problem that's got to get fixed. And so that those are the things, those two areas to me really concern me. Mm-hmm. And it's the, it's the two things that you and I are going to be watching for on Saturday when, against Wisconsin. It's and is and the this line is where the rub, cleaning this is where stuff the up because Jim man. Leonard's going to bring twists and stunts because oh. they're an odd front defense. An odd front defense are built. That's a three man front, by the way. They are built for line games. Yep. I mean, that's one of the reasons you do it. That's why you do it. Line yeah, exactly, game. exactly. They're going to throw a lot of line games at Notre Dame, and they're going to come at Notre Dame hard. And, and they're going to. This is what they're going to say: Notre, We are not athletic enough to defend Notre Dame on the perimeter. We're not. So we're just going to do what Toledo and Purdue did. We're going to attack your your line, and we're going to yeah. press, and we're going to throw off the timing of your pass plays. There's a blueprint. There's Tom absolutely. Tom Reese is going to have to have an answer for it. Now, there's right. things he can do, and we'll get into that as we get deeper into the week. But for this game, you know, as we talk about this game, that's what we saw. Yeah. But I, well, I want to say this before we move on because th- there are some good <clears throat> things to to say, and and we got another super chat from Demetrius Rex. Uh, thank, thank you for you, that, sir. Demetrius. He says it feels good to watch one of these shows without my nerves being shocked by a sketchy win. He's probably not feeling like it feels good after the last, you know, what we've been talking <laughs> about the last twenty minutes. Uh, uh, it says, I feel better going to the next, these next few weeks after this win than the last two wins. Now it's time to refine. So, yes, agree with that time to refine part for sure. And then we've got another super chat from Kevin Dillon. This is a big one. I appreciate that very, Thanks, very Kevin. much, Kevin. Very much. He goes, agree really? with your assessment of Tosh. Told my dad yesterday he will be a good one as long as coaching doesn't impede his progress. Amen. Bingo. Bingo. Tosh is really talented. I agree. He's got good feet when he when he has the right technique. He's we saw strong. that from Zeke yesterday, too. When Zeke yeah. had good reps, Vince, they were really good reps. And see, that's I, I kind of anticipated Zeke having some issues early just because it's a new position. Things are a little bit different, but not to the struggle that we had seen. You know what I mean? And so – it's good to see him kind of progressing a little bit. And yeah. when he's good, he's good. When the left good, side of the good. line yesterday was significantly better than the right side. Oh now, they gosh. had they had more just pure misses, right? More mistakes, which, again, that's your two youngest guys for, you know, Kelly wants to talk about youth. That's your younger side. But the right side just flat got their butts whooped. Yeah. They were just flat getting beat. Yeah. The left side, to me, is where the highlight blocks mainly came from. In my right. opinion, and believe me, they weren't perfect. There was one where Tosh barely even got out of his stance. There was already a guy by him. I mean, it, you know, because was that which one was that? Because in the was first that the half, one where he was actually he actually stepped inside first. Yeah, I think he then took went outside. Step. I think he took. Yeah, because I think he stepped inside. I think there was a they weren't sure okay. the he stepped inside, and then by the time he tried to get it out, just, so yeah, it I looked like he got out of his stance slow, but it just yeah. was him. Like, wait, a minute, am I supposed to go inside and protect yeah. inside? I it know it's analysis by paralysis. I'm paralysis by analysis. Yeah. It's like there's eh, just an uncertainty of who's yeah. supposed to do what in these pass right. protections. Now, I don't know right. what that is. That could maybe be Jack Cohn's not setting the protections correctly. It could be Jack Cohn isn't isn't verbalizing them in the correct manner. It could be it, there's a lot of things that it could be. I don't want to say it's a hundred percent on the line. Maybe it's a quarterback problem. You know, who knows? Yeah. But it's something that happens over and over again. But I, I do appreciate that. And like I said, when Tosh was on yesterday, yeah, he was he was impressive. He he's got an NFL future if he can get developed. Vince, that, that's the big thing. And I said this in yesterday's show, and I'll say it again. Uh, even after rewatching the film, even with all the mistakes that Tosh made, when uh Fisher gets back, I would love to see Tosh go to the right side and then slide lug in. I, I'm serious. That that yeah. would be my fix. They gotta let Josh play in short space in tight windows. Yes. He has regressed since 2019 from a pass yes. pro standpoint. Yeah, he has. But anyway, that's and a it's a technical thing. The one thing I do want to say offensively that that impressed <clears> me yesterday is number one, Jack Cohn's got to do a better job of not letting the pressure affect him. He's gonna have to find better ways to I mean, I know you got to move around, but you can't have some of the misses that he had yesterday, but I'll tell you what, that kid responds to adversity in a really impressive he way. Does two games in a row? Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you talk about you're bringing in Tyler Buckner in the game before he was getting hurt, his finger flipping pops out, and he leads him on that final drive. Then this week, he played one of the worst halves of football he's ever had, probably in a, in, a, in college. Nine of twenty two for eighty six yards. Bad. Just not good. And then he comes out and and he just, you know, he makes some big time throws in the second half. Now, you know, one was went for a 62 t- yard touchdown. The other one should have gone for a 39 yard touchdown. 
had a really nice corner route throw to convert a second and was it a second and 16 or second and 15 that he turns into a first down, you know, on, on to Avery Davis where he really fit that ball. There was, and there was another outcut that he threw to Avery Davis where he literally fit the ball in between three guys, you know, because the ball got out so quickly and he made, the, he made the read. So th- there, there were some good things to take out from that regards. He just, if they can just figure out a way to just give him some some semblance of a pocket, because look what he did on the couple clean pockets he had on Saturday. See, he, he you know climbed the pocket, made good throws. Like that's that's the Jack Cohn you and I were anticipating seeing all and season. We've, we've seen each of the first right. three games at times. Absolutely. So that's uh, that's my thoughts on the offense, Vince. Is there anything else that you kind of saw? Because I promise you, this next segment is going to be a lot better, a lot more fun. <laughs> a lot I, well, more excited. I like. I talked about my positive. I mean, it, the, the running backs are a positive. I thought Avery Davis was a positive. I thought yeah. he played a heck of a game. We talked about that yesterday, but yeah. I still think he he is exceeding my expectations. And I had high expectations for him because if it wasn't for Avery Davis, I'm not sure they win that game yesterday, to be honest with you. So I, I really liked his play. And this is kind of what makes this Notre Dame team so potentially dangerous, Vince, because – they took your best player out of the game. Yeah, Michael Mayer had one catch for five yards. Your second best pass game weapon took himself out of the game, Kevin Austin. Correct. Your third best pass game weapon had like three catches for 29 yards, flat out drops, so should be touchdown. And yet Notre Dame still was able to rip off big plays because yeah. you have Kyron Williams kind of the backfield and you have Chris Tyree made a big play in the pass game. But then Avery Davis says, okay, you want to single cover me? I got you. Yeah, and and he could have he could have got a lot more balls yesterday if if there was time. I mean, he that that's the thing is it, this team is so dangerous that you could take legitimately you could take three weapons away and still get smoked with big plays because they've that's that's the thing that's impressive about this team. Now they don't have a lot of depth at receiver anymore. That's gone. But boy, but the, the starters the they, they have the six group they have is targets. really good. They have six legit targets yeah. that they can go to if somebody's not having a good game or if somebody's taken out or yeah. whatever. Six legit targets. And that doesn't That's include scary. guys like Lorenzo Styles and Deion right. Taylor, who who should be really good players. I mean, I agree. Real, four freshmen should be guys that can help you out and contribute, but – Th- that that's the thing that kind of says, boy, I, I, you know, fingers crossed. And, yeah. You know, look for me, it's, it's, I don't have a lot of faith that it's going to get corrected. If I'm wrong and Jeff Quinn is able to correct this and I hope he does. I, I'm going to say you said earlier, you, the thing you wanted to be most wrong about was, was Kane Madden. I hope Jeff Quinn makes me look foolish these next nine weeks. Cause I don't think it's going to get fixed. I hope he proves me wrong because if they can just be an average line, just an average line, this offense is going to start smashing people. It really is. So I'm I'm excited about that. Now I hope that he proves me wrong and he start to we start to see that on Saturday against Wisconsin. Uh, 